Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Let us begin to pour out our praise and worship. Let us just honor the King of Kings, our deliverer, the one that saves, the one that delivers, the one that sets free that no one can chain the reason why we are living, our source, our essence. Lord, we bless you today. Jehovah, we honor you. We give praise, honor, and adoration that is due unto your name. We are gathered here together for the purpose of your praise and service once again. Lord, blessed be your name. Be glorified in this place today in the name of Jesus. Let us begin to worship his name for his people. Let us begin to thank him for our journey. For he is indeed our Alpha and Omega. The one that knows the end from the beginning. The one that is never caught unawares or by surprise. We bless your name. Ahoda la belu weya tata. Ka o sheru kaza la beko kata. Iki amba i kazumi rea puri matu. Lord, we lift up your name in worship. We are grateful for your love, your goodness, favor, kindness. We are here today because you made it possible. You have done great things for us as individuals, as members of this great body. We give you praise. We give you worship. Be thou glorified in the name of Jesus. Let us bless the Lord for the gift of access. Let us thank him for the past miracles. Let us thank him for all that he has done, for all the times that we have come into his presence, that he has filled our mouths and satisfied us with good testimonies. And has never left our expectations unmet. Jehovah, we bless you. We give you the glory. For you always do amazing things. Every time we call you, you hear us. You are always near to us. Father, be glorified in the name of Jesus. Now let us begin to say, Lord, do a new thing in this meeting. Let us begin to pray that the spirit of the Lord will be strong and mighty upon his people today. That the Lord will fill us with his bread. That there shall be bread of healing, of understanding, of direction, of clarity, of depth, of new knowledge. We begin to gain weight in the spirit afresh and anew in the name of Jesus. Zo Maria Perum Katug. Agunda Katele Shebra Katugadaya. Lord, we ask that you do that which you alone can do today. Not by our power nor might, but by your spirit today. Let there be newness. Let there be freshness. Let there be nourishing anew in the name of Jesus. Fill us with your word. Renew your spirit upon your servant today. Let the testimonies be unusual and unique to today's meeting. Be glorified in our lives and in this place today, Lord. We say, blessed be your name, most high God. We're going to bless the name of the Lord for he has heard us. You said exceedingly, abundantly, beyond all we can ask or imagine you would do. We praise you with that assurance and understanding today. We say, blessed be your holy name in the mighty name of Jesus. Let all that we would do glorify you. Let thy will alone be done. Let our mouths be filled with your wisdom. We bless your name, Jesus. Father, we worship you. We bless your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hosanna oh, in the Let my king be lifted high. We sing, Hosanna. Help me sing, Hosanna. Hosanna. In the Ah, ah, yes. Let 
said how king be lifted I we say go King upon high sing oh Zana sing Zana to the Lord God oh Zana in the ah yes let Proclaim, Ozana. We say we bless you. We bless you.
because we have experienced it we have seen it and we can testify and attest to the fact that there is none like you you are limitless not bound by any circumstance whatsoever we thank you for the privilege to know and to keep knowing you Lord be glorified today as always let your glory fill this house and all of our lives without exception. In Jesus' most powerful name, we have worshipped. Hallelujah. Give Jesus praise. Amen. 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 We're glad to be in God's house. Shout a bigger amen. amen. God is good. Yeah, you can clap for him. You can clap for him. You can clap for him. Amen. amen. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we say thank you. As we have come to your house, Lord, take the glory. In the name of Jesus. All you will hear today will be according to what you want to tell us. Our hearts will be so linked up, connected to yours in the name of Jesus. At the end of today, our eyes will be opened, our spirits will be opened. Our souls will be open to you and to know more in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' most glorious name, we've prayed. Amen. Clap those hands together for Jesus and gladly take your seat. All over the world, I believe you are watching. Uh, today we call it a straight, sorry, it's tight, the law. Why am I calling straight the law? Maybe God wants us to speak about faith. <laughs> Amen. 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 Uh, quickly, let's open our Bibles. Let's open our Bibles, our Bibles, quickly, our Bibles to Genesis. Genesis 14. Genesis 14 from 18. Genesis 14, 18.
Now, if you read the story of Genesis, it talked about a battle of the five kings. We are not here to study about the battle of the kings, but I want to show something from Genesis. Now, when I read this, there's something else I'm going to read for us so that we can grab this now. Now, and Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, meaning he brought forth provision. Someone just finished the war, and after finishing the war, you'll be ready. So a man came to strengthen them by bringing food. Are you following? He brought forth bread and wine, and it was the priest of the Most High God. Remember the first thing, Melchizedek was the king, king of Salem. He brought forth what? Bread and what? Wine. And he was the priest of who? The Most High. And he blessed him, blessed who? Blessed Abraham. And said, blessed be Abraham of the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth. I, I've, I've once explained this, but that's not where we're going. He called Abraham possessor of the heaven and earth. He wasn't talking about God there. He was talking about Abraham being possessor of heaven and earth. No wonder there's a place that's called Abraham's bosom in heaven. Amen. Okay, next one. And blessed be the most high God. You see, he first blessed Abraham. He said, blessed be Abraham, possessor of the, of the heaven and heart. And blessed be the most high God. Which had delivered thy enemies into thy hand. So what he came to do was to speak to Abraham about what the Lord just did. To open Abraham's eyes. So he gave Abraham bread and wine. That's food. Not for Abraham alone. Mind you. And to tell Abraham how God has delivered him from the hands of his enemies. In, deliver thy enemies into thy hand. And he, Abraham, not Melchizedek, gave him tithes of all. Praise the Lord. Now, let me first explain this so that we get it now. If you look at what is called the Old Covenant, which is the Old Testament, this is not the Old Testament. This is not what. Let me explain. Now, let's go to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews. Let's go to Hebrews 8. Hebrews 8, 9. Hebrews 8, 9. If you are there, please wait for me. Hebrews 8, 9. Hebrews 8, 9. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers uh -huh, in the day. Uh -huh, continue. Where I took over them by the hand uh -huh. to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Please read again. Not according to the covenant Not that I made. Not according to the covenant that I made. With their fathers. With their fathers. In the day. In the day. Meaning the day he made the covenant with them. That's the old covenant. The old testament. The day he made that covenant with them was the day in which he took them by their hands and led them out of Egypt. So anything that happened before that day was not Old Testament. Are we following? It's making sense, right? Because the Lord just said now, he said, not according to the covenant. He told us when he made the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Not according to that covenant. So the day he made that covenant was when they came out from Egypt. So the Old Testament started from when they walked out from Egypt. Not even while they were in Egypt. You're following? There's something that the Bible told us in the same Hebrews 9. Hebrews 9. Hebrews 9, 17. Hebrews 9, 17. Then when I say this, I will give us 1 Corinthians as well so that we can get this. Hebrews 9, 17. For a testament is in force. A testament is in force. Is that correct? Is, is it in force? In is in force. Uh -huh. In force. In force. A testament is in force. Meaning a testament comes to be. Uh -huh. After men are dead. When what? After men are dead. After men. I, I don't like that. Uh, the, the, that's not the word. I'm looking for the one that says after the testator. 
after men are dead, meaning the ones that made the testament. Since it has no power at all while the testator lives. Okay, that's it. Now, a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at while the testator lives. Meaning the one that started the testament must be dead before you can say the testament has begun. It's the same thing that tells us that the New Testament did not die, did not start until Jesus died. Because Jesus was the one that ushered out into the New Testament. You following? Now, how is it that no one died in the Old Testament? And I just told us now that the Old Testament began when they came out of Egypt. Now, let me show you how they died. First Corinthians. First Corinthians. First Corinthians 10 to, you know, when you are doing baptism, how many of us have been baptized here? Eh? When you are doing baptism, what would they tell you? When they dip you into the water, what does it mean? You are dead to your old self and you are raised to God. So water is what signifies death and life. Are we getting this? I don't know if it makes sense now. Now, start from one. Start from one. Ten one. Ten one. Moreover, brethren, uh -huh. I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud. All our fathers were under the cloud. Uh -huh. All passed through the sea. They all passed through the sea. All See, were baptized. What we just read said, a, testate, a testament cannot be enforced or cannot be enforced until the death of the testator. It's after the testator has died that you can say a testament now began. So, and I just told us the New Testament started when Jesus died. So, but in the Old Testament, no one died. No one what? And during baptism, you are told that you are now dead. The moment they dipped you inside water, you are dead. The moment they raised you up, you are alive. That was exactly what happened here. Back to one, back to one. Back to one. Moreover, brethren. Moreover, brethren. I do not want you to be unaware uh -huh. that all our fathers were under the cloud. All our fathers were under the cloud. All passed through the sea. All passed through the sea. All mm -hmm. were baptized into Moses. They were all baptized unto Moses in, in the, the cloud, cloud and, and in the, the sea. sea. Now, the moment they were baptized unto Moses, where were they baptized unto Moses? I'm asking. Where were they baptized unto Moses? When they crossed the Red Sea. The moment they crossed the Red Sea, that was their baptism. That was when they died. That was when the Old Testament was enforced. Because it was right after then God started giving them the laws. The law did not come before they passed through the Red Sea. Did anybody see it in their Bible? Maybe those that are watching online have seen it in their Bible before. It's not there. That's why the problem people have is they don't understand the scriptures. Most times you read it as new as as a, as a storybook. Some read it as, as um, what's it called newspaper. Because we say you must read the Bible, you must read the Bible. They just pick their phone or their hard copy Bible. I'm reading. I'm reading. What did you read today? I read this. I read this. They don't understand it. Just what I just told you now. Just explain to us that when Abraham lived, it was not the Old Testament. There were people who lived before Abraham. The Bible didn't record them. So, what testament were there? If the Old Testament was when Abraham lived. God had not yet given Abraham the law. God didn't give Abraham the law. Abraham never received any law. And it was the crossing of the Red Sea that led to the Old Testament. Because it signified that they all died. And they all rose back. And the law came. The Old Covenant. So, if you remember last week, when we were talking about Grace. And I explained to all that there are three laws. The law of sin, the law of God, and the law of grace. And I said the law of sin came to be the moment the law of grace, sorry, the law of God came. It was immediately they crossed the Red Sea. And they were waiting for Moses that went to get the laws and the commandment. Immediately Moses returned. Moses saw sin. Because they were sacrificing a cow. No, they weren't sacrificing a cow. They were worshipping it, the image of a cow. They made an image and started worshipping it. They didn't worship where they were in Egypt. It was after they came. So that was when the law of sin and the law of God came. 
But the law of sin and the law of God and the law of grace was not in existence at all during the time of Abraham. So Abraham didn't relate to that. That's what the Bible told us. It said, Abraham believed God and God counted it to him for righteousness. It was God that counted it for him as righteousness. Amen. I told us on Sunday that the Bible told us that we had the righteousness of God. The law, the job of the law is to make man righteous. In fact, Paul said in the place, he said, the law was not for a righteous man. That was what Paul said. The law was not for what? A righteous man. Because the law failed in making us righteous. That was why God gave us the law of grace. That now makes us the righteousness of God. Amen. So according to this now, now let's go back to Genesis 14, 18 to 20. Just according to what we have read now, I just showed us right now that the Old Testament was not in existence during Abraham. Is that settled? Now, back to that Genesis. And Melchizedek king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High. Maybe I should try and read in another translation here. Let me read in ESV. Oh, sorry. Classic Amplified. That might explain some things more. Melchizedek, king of Salem, later called Jerusalem. You following Brought out bread and wine for their nourishment. Meaning he brought out bread and wine for all of them. He was the priest of God, most high. And he blessed him and said, blessed, favored, with blessings, made blissful, joyful. Be Abraham, by God, most high, possessor and maker of heaven and earth. And blessed, praised, and glorified be God, most high. Who has given your foes into your hand? And Abraham gave him a tent of all. Abraham gave him what? After he did what? After he provided for Abraham. It was the provision that prompted Abraham to give a tent. There was nothing called the tent before Abraham did that. There, it was not in existence anywhere. No one had ever given God tight before Abraham did it. And Abraham did it when the law was not in existence. Abraham did it because Abraham understood that this one that came is not a man. I will prove that to us. Let's go to Hebrews now. Hebrews. Hebrews 7. Hebrews 7. From verse 1, Hebrews 7, from 1. Uh -huh. Melchizedek, king of Salem. Now, the same Melchizedek we just saw in Genesis now. Uh -huh. Priest of the Most High God. He was what? Priest of the Most High God. Uh -huh. Who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. Uh -huh. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. Abraham gave a tenth part of all, right? Mm -hmm. Continue. First being translated. Mm -hmm. King of righteousness. King of what? Righteousness. Righteousness. And then also king of Salem. And then also what? King of Salem. The law was to make man righteous, but the law failed in making man righteous. Now, that law was replaced by a law that makes you righteous, which is called the law of grace. And the law of grace is the one that makes us righteous. That's why we are called the righteousness of Christ. The righteousness of God. Now, if this man that is called the king of righteousness and gave Abraham gifts, the gift that is being given by king of righteousness is righteousness. Are you getting this? The gift that is being given by the king of righteousness is called what? Righteousness. If you call someone the father of John. And that person sends his son to you. The one he gives as a son 
that I sent to you is called what? John. You following me? When God gave us his only son, he gave us his only son as the gift of life. So the one that gave the gift there is the king of righteousness. The king of righteousness is God. Christ. I, I believe you are getting it. The king of righteousness is God. So when Abraham received from the king of righteousness, he understood that the one that is giving him gift is not man. Let's keep reading. And after, and then also, mm -hmm. king of Salem, meaning king of peace. Who is king of peace? Who did the Bible tell us are the king of peace? Jesus. Jesus, the prince of peace. Continue. Yes. Without there's father. a prince and there's a king. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. Without father, without mother. Without, without father, without mother. Without genealogy. No genealogy. You can't, you can't trace him. The only one that has that attribute you can't trace is God. We are getting it. Let's continue. Let's continue. Having neither beginning of days nor end of life. Uh -huh. But made like the son of God. But made like the son of God. Uh -huh. Remains a priest continually. Remains what? A priest. A priest continually. Please note this well. That man remains a priest continually. Having made like the son of God. The son of God is Christ. So, if he remains a priest continually, it means he never dies. He lives forever. Now, let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. Now, consider how great this man was. Uh -huh. To whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils. Uh -huh. And indeed, those who are of the sons of Levi, uh -huh. who received the priesthood. Now, the sons of Levi are the ones that receive the, the priesthood. priesthood. Uh-huh. Have a commandment to receive tithe from the people according to the law. They have what? A commandment a to receive commandment tithe, to from, receive the tithe from the people. The commandment was given to them to receive tithe from the people. But the commandment was not given to Melchizedek to receive tithe from the people. It was Abraham that had the understanding that gave it to him. Now, when Abraham did that, God knew what he did. God copied Abraham. And gave the law that you must pay this tithe. Because they were not doing it. The law was, told, was, was given not for a righteous man. Remember I said that. A righteous man does not need the law. You don't need the law. Because it was the introduction of the law that introduced the law of sin. Until the law of grace came and killed the law of sin. And replaced the law. That God gave them. Both law of grace and the law of God, they are both law of God. Hmm? Now, Levi is the one that received the priesthood from God. And God gave the commandment that henceforth you will receive tithe from your brethren. And the Bible told us if there was no fault in the old covenant, there will be no need for a new one. Are we following? Now, the new covenant is being tied up to who? Christ. If the new covenant is being tied up to Christ, it means Christ lives forever according to what we know. Jesus lives forever. But the sons of Levi, they are all dead. The Levitical priesthood, from when he started, they are all dead. Abraham that gave the tithe is gone. You are following? Now, let's keep reading. The law, that is of their brethren. It was given, the Lord, so it was given to the Lord to receive tithe from his brethren. Uh -huh. Though they have come from the loins of Abraham. Even though the, bro the brethren came from the loins of Abraham. But he whose genealogy is not derived from them. Uh -huh. Received tithe from Abraham uh -huh. and blessed him who had the promises. Blessed him who had the promise. Uh -huh. Now, beyond all contradiction, uh -huh. the lesser is better by the, the lesser is blessed by the better. The lesser is blessed by the by the better. It means that Melchizedek is better than Abraham. 
And Abraham is the one that received the promise. That's what he's just saying. Continue. Here, mortal men receive tithes. Here, mortal men receives what? Tithes. Where? Here. Here. Uh huh. But there he receives but them. But there he receives what? Them. Them. Now, the question is, where is there? I won't even go there today. I won't go to where is there today. It says, if mortal men receives what? Tithes. But there he receives what? Tithes. He never said, but there he does not receive tithes. He received them of whom it is witness, witness that he leave it. Now, let me read down before I just wait. What is that? Hebrews 7, 8. Furthermore, here in the Levitical priesthood, tithes are received by men who are subject to death. While there, in the case of Melchizedek, you're following? In the case of Melchizedek, they are received by one of whom it is testified that he lives perpetually. Meaning, the tithe that they were given according to the Levitical priesthood does not have the capacity to sustain them forever. Because it's been received by men that died. Men that died. He said, but there, in the Mekisedek priesthood, you receive that tithe forever. Now, according to the scripture, we have transformed from the Levitical priesthood to the Mekisedek priesthood. In the Levitical priesthood, it is only those that are born by Levi that can receive tithes. Are you following? Only those that are born by who? Levi that can receive tithes. That's why it's called the Levitical priesthood. Levi's priesthood. It's only his children that can be priests. Amen. Amen. Let's go further so I will explain the other one. Now, in the other way, the Melchizedek priesthood, that is what he he called there. The one that came in the order of Melchizedek, Jesus was not given back to by the order of Levi. He came through Judah. Judah was not given the priesthood to receive tithes. Are you, are you getting this? Judah wasn't given. It was only Levi that was given. Levi was the one that God chose. Said, Forever you be priest in my, in, my, in my presence. But Jesus came, being Melchizedek, in the lineage of Judah. And he said, yeah. Meaning in the Greek, the era of Jesus, the Judah priesthood, they will be tied forever. Do you get it? Let's read it again. Here, yeah, men that die receive tithes. Let me read in that classic amplified. I think I love it. You can, can you change the translation? Let's see if you have another one. Furthermore, here, yeah, in the Levitical priesthood, tithes are received by men who are subject to death. Why there, in the case of Melchizedek, they are received by one of whom it is testified that he lives perpetually. Let me, let me try and read ESV version if it's a bit different. Uh-huh. In the one case, tithes are received by mortal men. But in the other case, by one of whom it is testified that he lives. The one that is testified that he lives is Jesus. So let's continue reading. Uh-huh. And as I may say, so Levi also who received tithes, paid tithes in Abraham, uh-huh, for he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him, uh-huh. Levitical priesthood. If perfection were to the Levitical priesthood. For under it, the people received the law. For under the Levitical priesthood, people received the law. Uh huh. What further need was there that another priest should rise according to the order of Melchizedek? Now, hold it there. Hold it there. The Melchizedek priesthood was what gave the law. So when another priesthood comes, what does it give again? The law. 
The priesthood brings the law. Are you getting it? The Melchizedek priesthood brought the law of God, the one that they received, that Moses gave them. But the Me sorry, the Levitical priesthood was the one that Moses gave them. The Melchizedek priesthood is the one that Jesus gave. Are you following now? So the two laws, one was from Moses, one was from Jesus. The one from Moses is according to the Levitical priesthood. Moses was a descendant of Levi. You getting it? Jesus, a descendant of what? Judah. But he came in the Le Me Melchizedek priesthood. And it says, there, they receive it forever. Are we getting it? Uh -huh. She'll rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron. Aaron is according to the order of Levi. We are getting it. All right, continue. For the priesthood being changed, uh -huh. there is made of necessity a change also of the law. Now, do you see it? The priesthood was changed. When the priesthood was being changed, the law also must be changed. And I told us last week, the law was changed from the first law they received to the law of grace, the law of righteousness. You see, it's making sense. It's self explanatory. Is that correct? If you read it, you get it. But what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to show us how these things link in the Bible. Okay, continue. He of whom these things are spoken pertain to another tribe, of mm -hmm. which no man gave attendance at the altar. Uh-huh. Continue. For it is evident... That our, Lord, that our Lord arose from Judah, of which tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning according priesthood. To the priesthood. Uh -huh. And it is yet far more evident, if in the likeness of Melchizedek, there arises another priest, uh -huh. who has come, not according to the law of a fleshy commandment, uh -huh. but according to the power of an endless life. He came according to the power of an endless life. No, no. If he comes according to the power of an endless life, and we were told that there, in the Melchizedek priesthood, when he comes, it is Tight is being paid forever. No. How come people say tight is of the law? From what I just showed us now, it means there are two tights. One that was not with the law. Don't one, the other that was with the law. But in both ways, the one that was not with the law transferred to another, which was another law that replaced the former law. Because what we read the other time, he said, if there was no fault with the first law, there was no need for another law. But they moved from the former law to another law. There is always a law. There's always what? A law. There's always a law. Let's continue. For he testifies, mm -hmm. you are a priest forever, mm -hmm. according to the order of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Uh -huh. For on the one hand, there is an annulling of the former commandment, uh -huh. because of his weakness and unprofitableness. Uh -huh. For the law made nothing perfect. The law made nothing perfect. When he says the law made nothing perfect, he's not talking about the second law, he's talking about the first law. Remember he told us that the, of the former law was being replaced by the second law. That's what he said. But said, when he says the law makes nothing perfect, people think he was talking about the law generally. He's talking about the first law that I received from the Levitical priesthood. Not the second law that came from the Melchizedek priesthood. So there are two laws. One from the Me Levitical priesthood, the other from, from the Mechis Melchizedek priesthood. So when he says the law made nothing perfect, he wasn't talking about the second one. He was talking about the first one. Continue. For the law made nothing perfect. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, mm -hmm. there is the bringing in of a better hope. Bringing in of a better hope. Let's say bringing of the better law. Uh -huh. Through which we draw near to God. Through which we draw near to God. A better law that draws us near to God. The former law was chasing us away from God. But a better law replaced the former law that had fought and drew us near to God. Uh-huh. 
And in as much as he was not made priest without an oath, uh -huh. for they have become priests without an oath. Uh -huh. But he with an oath by him who said to him, the Lord has sworn and will not relent. You the Lord priest. has sworn and will not relent. You, you are a priest, priest forever. forever. According to the order of Melchizedek. Uh -huh. By so, by so much, much more was Jesus, Jesus made a surety of a better testament. And that was what I quoted, that a testament is not enforced until the date of the testator. If he is a surety of a better testament, it means the false testament was replaced by him or was not good. So it came to give us a better testament. And how did he give us a better testament? When he died. The moment he died and rose, he gave a better testament. The first testament, the moment they walked into the Red Sea and came out from the Red Sea, they received the first testament. So if someone that is not even in the testament at all can understand the things of God by giving tithes, how much more the one that was told that in the order that we give the tithe forever, they always have a better understanding and a better result than the one that gave that does not even receive the testament. The first testament, the problem the first testament had was the first testament saying used an advantage of it to come, in, to, come to them. But the second testament gave power to kill sin. To make sin useless. So when the second testament was given, he said this one is to draw men to God. And if it draws men to God, unlike the former one that was chasing men away from God. You are getting it? So if it draws men to God, and there, remember I said remember the word there, and there, they receive tithe forever. So what will stop that tithe now? What should stop it? Now people always make a quotation or something and says. But Jesus never taught about tithe. Jesus never mentioned why are people not paying tithe. Jesus never mentioned it. I'll give us this. Matthew 23, 23. But before I say, before we read Matthew 23, 23, let me ask one question. If you are walking on the streets as an adult, as an adult, and you're about to cross a road, and another adult that you are probably older than walks up to you and is trying to instruct you on how to cross the road, what will you say? I'm asking. He said, please, stay off. I know these things. Because those are rudimentary things that you should know as an adult. The same way, if another adult wants to train you on how to eat the food you're always eating, you'll be hungry. There are some things that you should not be teaching an adult. You only teach children. Children, you don't teach adults. There are some things that you should have grown past. I know when kids are young, when they are still kids, when everyone was still kids, a, a, a child, sorry, you might, your parents might have to be waking you up to go and pee at night. If they don't wake you up to go and pee, you have overplayed during the day. You bed wet. Hmm? Now, can you do that to an adult? Wake them up. Ah, go and pee, go and pee, go and pee, go and pee, go and pee. Can you do that? Never. Why? They have grown up. Growth will stop some teachings. Growth. So growth is very important. Now, I said Matthew 23, 23. Now, we are going to read Matthew 23, 23. And please, I want us to read Matthew 23, 23. Don't be too spiritual while reading it. Read it as an, as an English literature. Just don't, don't use spirituality at all, at all, at all. Don't, don't use spiritual. We are always spiritual, I know. We walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. This time around, just, just peep. Peep to the flesh small and read it. Don't use spirituality. Read it. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, mm -hmm. hypocrites. Mm -hmm. For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin. You pay tithes of mint, anise, and, cumin. and cumins. Now, maybe we should check what is mint, anise, and cumins. I, I wish we can project it. 
I wish we can do that. I didn't prepare the picture. I would have, I would have given it to him so that I can project it. Mint, anise, This is like, they are like wheat. They are small, small, small grains. They are like wheat. Hmm? You know, there are other things that are bigger. The other things that are what? That are bigger. Like yam. Like cassava. Hmm? Like what? Yam. Cassava. Mention big ones too. Like corn, hmm? eh? barley, uh huh. Which other one? Big ones, big ones, big ones. Now, what I'm trying to say is this: it's simple. What I'm trying to say is simple. The things that they pay that are, it's like Jesus is saying, you pay tight of even the smallest things that you receive. And you have omitted the weightier ones. When he's trying to say the weightier ones, the weightier ones means something that is heavier in terms of, in terms of trying to weigh them. You pay tight of the smallest grain. Hmm? Tight of what? If you can pay tight of the smallest grain, why can't you now even consider the ones that are bigger, that has weight? Because these ones don't even carry weight. They are so small. Imagine trying to pay tithe of... Mm, tithe is 10%. And you have 10 grains of meat. 10 grains. Does it carry weight? No. It carries no weight. Jesus is saying, the ones that doesn't even carry weight, you even carry them and bring them to church. The one that doesn't even have anything at all, you bring them to church. Why can't you pay attention to the one that carries more weight? That's where I'm trying to go. I'm trying to explain to us that the things that Jesus was making reference to here are things that carries no weight. Jesus is saying, this one carries no weight. The ones that carry weight, you won't do them. Now, and I've omitted the weightier matters of the law. He's talking about the law here. Now, the next one, the next one, the next page. Can someone help? Judgment. You know, the major matters of the law, which are what? Justice and mercy. And faith. And faith. Uh -huh. This you ought to have done. Now, this statement, I say let's read it as English. Not, don't be spiritual while reading it. This ye ought to have done. Uh -huh. Without leaving others undone. Without leaving others undone. This statement means this. If I'm wrong, you might correct me. You can correct me. If I'm wrong. It means this you ought to have done. Meaning the first one that you did. You ought to have done them. Right? Without leaving others. Meaning the ones that I now told you. Without leaving them undone. Meaning you should have done both of them. You ought to be doing both of them. Doing both of them in the sense that you ought to pay the tithes of the ones that you are even paying. The smallest matter, you ought to pay their tithes. And the weightier matters of judgment, of mercy, and of faith, you should do them both. Now, did Jesus talk about tithes or not? This statement is even an insult to them because Jesus was scolding them. If the elementary things you should know, like a child, should I be pulling your hand to cross the road. That's what he was saying. You should know these things. That's what he was saying. You should know these things. When you know these things, I don't need to cajole you to do them. Hmm. Amen. 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 This was the only place Jesus mentioned about. He didn't talk about it again. He did not. The other things Jesus was, was telling them were things that they were not used to. Or things that they knew before and didn't know. Like he was telling them about the demolition of the temple. He was telling them that he was going to die and rise the third day. He was telling them things that they didn't know. Does he have to be going back to teaching tithe? Tithe that they have received before they gave back to them. 
These guys know the law. They are the law keepers. You don't have to teach them. It's like teaching a professor. The course that the professor is teaching you. You have a professor in school. You have a boss that is teaching you how to do a job. And you are teaching your boss. That was what Jesus was doing. He was teaching them their job. You ought to have done this and not leave this undone. What's wrong with you guys? Why are you behaving like that? was what Jesus You know, it's an insult to them. He wasn't saying don't pay tithes. He wasn't saying don't face judgment, mercy and faith. He said do all of it. You ought to do this and not leave this undone. Simple. Let's rise on our feet. So I'll conclude by saying this. Tight is not the law. Tight is not what? The same way grace is the law. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. And you can still say tight is the law. The only difference is what law? The first or the second one? The one that was 40 or the one that replaced the 41? The one that replaced the 41. Tight came before the law ever came. And when the law came, he brought tight. He, he, he copied tight. Let me say he borrowed tight. When the law came. If the law borrowed tight. When the law came. And the other law that replaced it. That was the original one. Brought what tight was before. And established it. Because if there was no need for tight. Jesus would have told them. You shouldn't pay tight. What you should face is judgment. And mercy. And faith. But he didn't say that. He said you ought to have done this. And not leave this undone. Remember that Jesus is the maker. The creator of everything. He is God himself. You think God will know what is right? Who gave us the precept of right and wrong? Is it not God? This is what you should do. This is what you should not do. He told us those things. Let's pray this prayer. Father, I want to know you more. Reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. According to your word. I receive the rema of your word. Reveal yourself to me. Pray that prayer. Brakalahada. Rasete porokotoshete. Regadada. I want to know you, Jesus. Reveal yourself to me. Bali hadagada, rakete nemo, jekoro, bodogo, regadadarada. Thank you, Jesus. Begin to bless his name for the week. Thank you for the rest of this week that is according to what he has proposed in his heart for us. Thank you, Jesus. You keep us in perfect peace because our heart is stayed on you. That is a promise you gave, O oh Lord. In Jesus' most mighty name, we've prayed. Amen. Father, we give you glory. Take the glory, Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's give our offering. Let's give our offering. Let's give our offering. Let's give our offering. Remember, every teaching we give on Wednesdays and on Sundays or any day is not to attack anyone. It's to reveal the realm of God to us. The things that God spoke. We are not attacking no one. Huh? Because there are a lot of videos that are going on the internet. People are saying this. People are saying this. That's not why we are doing this. I didn't plan that I was going to speak on this. I didn't plan it. I planned something else. I was going to continue his grace the law. What we did last week. That's what I was going to continue. But God said no. This is what you should do. Amen. Amen. So there's no attack on anyone. This is just to speak the realm of God. Simple. Please, you can go ahead and give your, you can please project the account number for those that would like to do that. Glory be to the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, Glory be, be to, to the, the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, Glory be to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's share the grace together in unison. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be on our body with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Glory to Jesus. 
Amen.